Chevy was the first manufacturer to inject some much needed life into the smaller compact pickup truck segment with the Colorado back in 2015. Now three years later, there's a few new options on the market, but this week Chevrolet has sent me over a 2018 Colorado ZR2, basically an off-road Baja ready truck ready to do battle with the likes of a Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. So after three years on the market, is the Colorado still fresh and worth a look? That's what we're here to find out. trim is actually an all new trim for 2018 and you can see this is probably one of the most badass looking trucks I've ever seen to come off the showroom floor. It's basically one of the few vehicles you could buy brand new without a front bumper uh, and the reason being is because this one is designed to be the most off-road oriented truck. Now the Colorado as I said before has been on the market for a few years now and it does pretty well for Chevy. They consistently move about 110,000 units annually ever since this generation came out so it's been a pretty big success for them. Now the styling of the truck honestly hasn't changed since the 2015 aside from this special trim you have the same signature bow tie chevy grill you can change this bow tie to a blacked out grill or an illuminated one if you guys so choose uh, and the zr2 is kind of like the halo of the of the hierarchy this one's based off the z71 with its own unique styling its own unique suspension and off-road um, hardware now you, one thing that i do notice about the colorado that kind of gives it away as being a little bit of an older design uh, these are the standard headlights you can either choose between just this projector or just a regular plain style headlight. There's no LED daytime running lights. There's no by Xenon. There's no LED headlights available. Uh, the Canyon version offers LED running lights, but halogens are pretty common, unfortunately, in this particular segment. Now, again, because this is the ZR2, the body has been widened. It's got these 33 inch tall tires on 17 inch wheels, and it also has a lift kit. I believe Chevy said they lifted it around two inches. So this one has a tick over uh, 10 inches of ground clearance, along with wider fender flares to clear out these wheels. Um, I also particularly like this um, accent piece that goes along the side that's kind of like a guard. I thought it was actually a running board at first, like it might fold down, but no, that's actually not the case. Now with every other pickup in the segment, you can take it with several different cab configurations and bed lengths, ranging from a two-door regular cab to an extended cab. This one here is the four-door crew cab. You can also choose it as an extended cab in this particular trim if you like. And then of course, it only comes with the short five-foot bed. Chevy also offers a longer six-foot bed if you guys don't get this particular uh, trim level. Now at the back here, Again, the styling hasn't really changed. I think it's a particularly handsome truck, and I really like the changes that Chevy's made for the ZR2. They've made it wider, whereas the, you know, if you guys go for the regular trim truck, it kind of looks a little narrow and tall, not particularly uh, my liking. Now, the bed of this truck, the tailgate is damped. Um, the ZR2 comes already with a uh, bed liner, a spray-in bed liner, so that's kind of nice that they include that. And it's a particularly useful bed. Again, you might want the six-foot bed if you guys you know, actually plan to do some hauling. I believe it carries around 1,200 pounds of payload or capacity in the actual bed if you guys want to haul stuff. And then you can get all different kinds of accent pieces like you know a bed extender or a bed cover. Um, Chevy also offers kind of like an off-road um, equipment gear where you can put, where it actually puts something on the side to make this look even more aggressive than it is. But overall, I think the Colorado looks good. Personally, I might prefer the styling of the Canyon Twin, but the ZR2 is definitely one of the most badass looking trucks on the market, and I think it'll stay particularly that way for years to come. So the Colorado is starting to show its age, especially when you look in the tech department, and that's immediately going to be showing uh, when you first approach the vehicle. Here is the key fob for the Colorado. Uh, push button start with intelligent access entry is not available on this car instead, or this truck. Instead, you just have the traditional key insert, which some of you truck guys actually may prefer, but because it's a GM product, it does include remote start. To activate the remote start, just push the lock, bo lock button there, push and hold this button here. And then the truck will start right up for you. My tester has the V6 gas engine. To turn off the engine, just push the button again, and it'll shut the engine off. Now, uh, because it doesn't have any smart key access system, as you can see, there's no button on the handle. Instead, you have to push the lock button here once or twice to unlock all the doors. 
And then when you first look at the interior of the Colorado, you can see it's nothing really different, especially if you guys are used to all the GM interiors. In fact, the interior of this car, I think, hasn't really aged all that well. The materials are definitely more in the bargain basement end. Uh, and the this is this particular trim, the ZR2, is the only one, the only Colorado that gives you actual leather seats. All the other ones will have either cloth or a mixture of a cloth and a leatherette. Um, this is actually not a running board. This doesn't fold down or anything like that. So it's a little bit of a step to get in if you guys are shorter because this is the uh, model that's, you know, off-road oriented. There's also no handle here. So getting in the ZR2 can be a little bit of a pain, especially for somebody that's vertically challenged like myself. But once you get up here, you can see it has a really nice commanding view of the road because of that, you know, the 33 inch tall tires, the lift kit. And then when you shut the door, it sounds okay, a little bit tinny actually. So um, Chevy is definitely in due, or they're gonna be refreshing this truck in the next year or so, especially with the new Ranger coming out uh, soon later this year. Now to start the vehicle up, stick the key in the ignition. It actually feels a little bit on the chitsy side as well, but turn the key, has the traditional GM bongs. The gauges also do a sweep. Uh, and then what you're hearing is the 3.6 liter gasoline V6. The engine is actually a variation of the motors you're going to find in a Cadillac CTS or CT6, a Chevy Camaro. So we'll go into the driving dynamics later on. That's the standard engine on the ZR2. Now looking at the rest of the interior of the Colorado, you can see here the design certainly, you know, works. You kind of get in this and you know how to use everything. Um, the head unit here is the 7-inch uh, Chevrolet MyLink infotainment system. It's the older one. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is nice. But the materials, as I said before, are definitely on the bargain basement end. It kind of reminds me of what I expect an interior for like a subcompact vehicle like a Chevrolet Sonic for example um, hard touch plastic dashboard basically throughout the, the interior it's you know the graining is nice but I was expecting it to be a little bit nicer especially at this price point the door panels are also hard touch they're a little bit scratchy and cheap feeling there's a chrome door handle here the windows are one touch for the driver and front passenger um, only one touch down on the passenger side the rear seats are also one touch down but not one touch up only one touch up and down on the driver window there's a small little storage compartment here but the plastic my gosh this just reminds me of 90s GM it just feels a little bit cheap there's some silver painted plastic here but there's some nice storage here on the door pockets the steering wheel also it reminds me of the kind of steering wheel you get on a Chevrolet Impala it's not bad I mean you have buttons on the steering wheel here for your uh, trip computer there's also buttons on the back of the wheel here for you know, your audio, your volume control, your radio station presets. The gauges here, they're also very basic. There's a small, it looks like a four inch helper screen there in the center where you can kind of adjust how you want that to look by pushing the button here on the steering wheel. It's not bad. Um, it's just a little bit on the you know basic side. GM kind of reminds you that this truck, all the money went into this truck for um, the off-road hardware. Looking at the center stack here, you can see there's some more silver painted plastic. This is the seven inch head unit here. When you go to the navigation screen, my tester doesn't have the $500 navigation charge. Instead, you have to plug in your phone and use the um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, or you can use the OnStar button. It'll give you some kind of route. Projection, that's where your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is gonna come into play. And then you can see here, the touch response is good. Um, it's definitely on the you know faster end. Uh, the graphics are also okay. Um, but overall, I'm glad that Chevy did include Android Auto and CarPlay. But, you know, this isn't going to really wow people. When you push the home button here, you can see there's all your usual sources, your apps and whatnot. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you also get a backup camera. That's standard on every Colorado. It does have... Uh, distance markers and trajectory, but no parking sensors. I was surprised that this one doesn't have parking sensors. I mean, I'm guessing the sensors would get in the way of the off-road equipment when, they, when you take this vehicle off-road, so that's probably why they did that. It does have a single zone automatic climate control function um, with you know your heated seats here. You can change between just the seat back being heated or the actual seat back and the seat bottom being heated. Now down here, you can see there's lots of toggles here. This is for the locking front and rear differentials. That's a really great feature when you guys are off-road. I could have actually used a locking front diff when I had the TRD Pro a couple of months ago, and I got that stuck. Um, this button here turns on your tailgate light or your rear uh, bed light. Um, that's for your downhill assist control. There's your trailer hookup controls there. Down here, there's a little bit of storage. There's a USB port. Um, there's an aux port there. Uh, Chevy also included a wireless charger on this trim, which is nice. And then more cup holders right here. Now, this controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. 
um, which was a new transmission a couple of years ago, I believe. The shifter reminds me of an old GMC Envoy from the early 2000s. So it's definitely interesting that they use the shifter here. It has a manual mode via this little toggle switch right here, which is interesting. Um, over here on the left of the steering wheel, there's your headlight controls, your four-wheel drive switch is here. It has an automatic mode, a four high, four low. Um, your trailer brake controller is right there. Um, but overall, I mean, the interior of this car, the seats, I think also could use a little bit more padding. They're a little on the stiff side. I found the seats to be hard. I actually thought the Wrangler seats were a little bit better than the seats in this car or in this truck, even though I do like the leather upholstery. Uh, my tester doesn't have a sunroof. And actually, a sunroof I don't think is available on the ZR2 trim or the other, any Colorado trim. I'll have to double check that. But as I said before earlier, uh, this interior definitely could use a refresh in terms of the materials and some of the interfaces here some of the buttons and switch gear just look and feel old so a lot of pickup truck buyers actually use these to haul their families especially if you guys get the crew cab configuration so let's take a look at the rear seat area now first of all like all the other pickup trucks in the segment the seat actually folds up to reveal some somewhat of a storage area here although it's not particularly a flat floor like i've seen some competitors and you can also put the actual seat back down uh, where the headrest can kind of get in the way if you don't fold it down and then you can kind of use this as another shelf to put stuff now getting back into the second row here you can see without the running boards it's kind of a pain in the ass to get up here for short guys like myself but once you're back here the space is okay um it's definitely smaller uh than some of the competitors that i've seen the honda ridgeline definitely gives you the most space although some will argue that's basically a pilot now in terms of the materials it's all hard touch plastic just like the front area it's a little bit on the cheap side if i'm being honest here but i like the fact that um, chevy gives you two usb ports here there's a power outlet and there's a little storage area there but no rear seat vents and then as you guys saw here there's a nice armrest with two cup holders so again if you're going to put uh, some shorter friends in the back seat uh like under six feet tall just two of them. They should be okay on somewhat longer trips. Uh, the headroom here is good, uh, but overall the back seat is usable. Although that, there's a reason why a lot of buyers still choose a full size pickup truck. Under the Colorado's hood, Chevy actually offers a choice of two different engines. Um, most people may end up choosing the gasoline V6. It's a 3.6 liter with direct injection. And it actually makes the most horsepower in the class at 308 ponies and 275 pound feet of torque. Now it all goes out through an eight speed automatic, which was new, I believe two years ago. Um, and um, with going that power going through a part-time four-wheel drive system with an automatic mode, low range transfer case and locking front and rear differentials. Now, if you guys don't want a gas engine, the Colorado is the only uh, mid-sized pickup truck to offer a diesel. It still offers that 2.8 liter turbo diesel four cylinder which makes like 369 pound-feet of torque, uh, which honestly, I actually haven't had a chance to really drive yet, but that one's also the fuel economy leader. Now, this particular trim has a lot of heavy uh, off-road hardware on it, and it's not very aerodynamic. So fuel economy actually drops significantly. It's only rated at 16 city, 18 highway, and 17 combined. On the highway, it dropped like five MPG compared to the non-ZR2 trim. And because this vehicle weighs a lot more, it's around 4,800 pounds, uh, about 400 pounds heavier than the standard model. But let's get out on the road and see how it all works together, shall we? So first setting off in the Colorado ZR2, I have to say, these small trucks, I prefer the size of them a lot over a full-size truck. And this ZR2 trim is the off-road oriented model. It's competing with a TRD Pro. Now these Multimatic shocks, as I said, do a really good job of, you know, making this thing ride well on rough pavement. I mean, they're basically designed to be like off-road shocks. So you could drive on broken pavement at high speeds, or you can actually go over jumps from the factory. And even over, you know, these rocky, you know, gravelly roads that I'm on right now, just briefly, I'm immediately noticing that this truck actually feels like it rides a little bit better than the Tacoma TRD Pro, at least off pavement. But we'll get it on the road here and we'll see how it feels when, you know, you're driving this thing on pavement, which is where it's arguably gonna be spending the most of its time. Now the 3.6 liter gas engine in this car makes 308 horsepower, which is the most powerful uh, gas engine in the segment. And you definitely feel it. This engine 
pulls a lot harder than the last Tacoma TRD Pro that I drove. Even though this ZR2 trim weighs roughly around 400 pounds more than the base Colorado, um, you do feel that extra weight. Uh, the engine is really, really potent, honestly, for a mid-sized truck. The eight-speed transmission is also better than the six-speed automatic I drove in the Tacoma. And it's better just because it shifts quicker. Um, it, is more responsive when I put my foot down and it has two more gears so it puts the engine in the meat of its power band. Now the engine itself is definitely a noisier engine. I was actually complaining about the Tacoma's engine being a little bit of a gruff. It's a little lump like grainy sounding. This to me is actually even worse than that which is surprising although the engine noise is great. If you like a nice raspy V6 this will definitely deliver that. So it basically feels like this truck gets to 60 in around six, or I'm sorry, 7.5 seconds. Um, this truck would probably be quicker if it wasn't so heavy with all the hardware that the ZR2 gives you. The, I've seen it as quick as like under seven seconds for like a regular Colorado. Um, again, this, this, all this hardware definitely adds to making this thing feel a lot heavier. Now, the overall handling dynamics when you get on the road, the Colorado, you feel how much taller this thing is versus the regular. I drove a GMC Canyon Denali a few months ago, and this thing definitely doesn't feel quite as car-like. It feels more truck-like, actually. Um, those big off-road tires also transmit a good amount of noise, and the suspension, you know, it's best suited for off-road, you know, off, off the pavement. This feels tippy. It feels cumbersome a little bit. It's a little bit jittery as well. It, it feels like you're riding in a truck. The last Jeep Wrangler I drove, uh, the new one, actually rode a little bit better than this. Um, and the Tacoma TRD Pro has better on-road dynamics, although this, I will argue, is the better vehicle off the road. But, you know, most of these trucks are going to spend most of their time on-road, and you're going to really feel that compromise uh, when you get it out on the pavement. <laughs> But you know, the best thing about these trucks is when you have it in its two wheel drive mode, the thing is rear drive. And you know, even with these big knobby tires, it will still spin the back end out slightly and you know, skid the rear tires if you guys put your foot down hard. There is an automatic setting in the four wheel drive system, but um, you know, really I'm not on the best roads for this thing. And the steering is definitely very light. It's electric power steering. It doesn't really transmit anything in terms of road feel, but this truck's not dangerous to drive. It's not scary to drive. It's just kind of reminding you, hey, I'm in a big off road lifted truck um, so you need to slow down in those corners the engine is you know pretty responsive it makes decent sounds if you like that graininess of it although it is I will say it is the loudest v6 in the segment that I've driven um, and the visibility in here is pretty good there's some good view out of the front the side mirrors are large there's a blind spot indicator mirror although blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic alert is not available on this trim there's also no forward collision alert there's no lane departure alert that stuff is available on the lower trims of the Colorado but not the CR2 all that tech that driver assistance stuff would just simply get in the way of your actual driving when you're taking this thing off pavement. So I mentioned earlier the fuel economy on this truck is significantly downgraded compared to the regular one because of all the hardware. It's only rated at 16, uh, 18, and actually in my weeks worth of testing, I've only been averaging around 13 miles per gallon in mostly city driving. On the highway, the best I could muster was around 17 miles per gallon. So again, not the most aerodynamic truck, but you didn't buy this because of its fuel economy. You bought it for its capability, and this is where the Colorado, I think, has, you know, good on-road diving dynamics. I mean, the Canyon, the regular models, honestly, like the Canyon Denali I drove or the regular Colorado, not the ZR2, are really great daily vehicles. They're actually really good on the road. This, however, this version is not the best suited for on-road driving. I mean, as you guys can hear, the tires are a little bit noisy. Um, the ride is definitely stiff and jiggly. It doesn't handle quite as well. Um, the Toyota TRD Tacoma Pro, that actually is better on the road. It doesn't really give you as many compromises. However, this, to me, I have the best feelings off-road and if you guys see all the other publications it, it, it does do better off-road it's kind of like a you know a mini Raptor although Chevy doesn't really offer anything with more power this is the most powerful engine you can get you can also choose the diesel which I actually haven't had a chance to drive the diesel version yet um, but nevertheless that one that one will give you the best gas mileage but Chevy does charge a pretty hefty like $3,500 premium if you guys want the diesel offering but overall I think this is a really nice driving truck uh, especially when you guys take it off pavement but just keep mind if you do plan to keep this more on the pavement it may be a little bit um 
you know, a little bit harsher to live with on a daily basis. So after three years on the market and spending a week with the 2018 Colorado, I'm pretty confident to say that Chevy has done a good job of keeping this truck fresh in a segment that is honestly going to keep getting more and more competitive every year. Uh, the styling of this truck is honestly still very good, especially if you guys go for this badass looking ZR2 trim with the 33 inch tall all-terrain tires, the lift kit, uh, the aggressive front and rear bumpers, the uh, aggressive shocks. This is one truck that'll look good for years to come. Now, as you guys saw from the test drive, the Colorado is definitely not perfect. Off the road, it's definitely one of the most capable off-road vehicles you can buy straight from the showroom for floor. I found it to be particularly better off pavement ver versus the last Tacoma TRD Pro I tested. However, when you take this vehicle on the road where it's probably gonna spend most of its life, it's not the most particularly comfortable vehicle. I didn't find the seats particularly comfortable. The uh, engine is a little bit noisier than what you get in the Tacoma, although it is more powerful. Uh, the fuel economy was pretty abysmal and the ride quality was a little bit jittery. Uh, definitely reminded you that you were driving a truck and these badass tires, they're a little noisy. So for me, the daily commute in this truck would be a little tiring. I'd probably go for just a standard Z71 version or uh, look at the GMC Canyon uh, version because it's a little bit more refined. But with all that said, what's it gonna cost to put a Colorado ZR2 in your driveway. Uh, now the Colorado itself is pretty inexpensive actually. It's one of the cheapest trucks in the segment. It starts at around $20,600, which is a couple grand cheaper than a lot of its competitors. Although I believe the Frontier might be right in that line, but that thing is pretty old. Nissan needs to redesign it. Now this particular one, is roughly twice the price because it's a ZR2. It starts at 42,995. My tester actually is pretty light on the options. It only has uh, the upgraded paint for like 400 bucks. All in, this one stickers for around 43,475, which is again, the same price as the Tacoma TRD Pro with an automatic transmission. The manual is about $2,000 cheaper. Uh, I think at this price, it's actually a pretty good deal. Um, but if you start adding some of the options that Chevy offers, uh, some of the accessories, it can easily push the price to around 50,000. And if you guys tick the diesel option, it's like another four grand for the diesel option. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. If you're also looking to see, see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.